Hi everyone, I'm Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands. And today I wanted to talk to you about some amusing Dutch words. Now, why are they amusing? It's only because as an English speaker, I have to like kind of break down words so that I can remember them. And with these particular words, I found that breaking them down kind of didn't make any sense. So I thought I would share those words with you today. But isn't it interesting how when you learn another language, these are exactly the things that make it fun and also a little bit difficult. And if you are someone who is struggling with learning another language, if you've moved to the Netherlands or are planning on moving to the Netherlands and you want to learn Dutch but are finding it difficult to practice, then I have great news for you. Let me introduce you to italki. Italki is one of my favorite ways of learning a new language. Italki is a language learning platform where you can find advanced or native speakers of the language that you're looking to learn. So if you cannot find conversation partners in real life or people to teach you certain things about the language you want to learn, you can go on to Italki and do just that. So when Italki initially approached me for this collaboration, I was beyond excited because years ago when I was trying to learn Spanish, I found that I really could not find people to practice Spanish with. And then I just went on to italki and that completely solved my problem. So if you are in a similar situation, go to italki and check it out. I have included a link in the description box down below that will actually take you to italki's Black Friday sale. This is incredible. From the 1st to the 30th of November, italki is having 50% off on their lessons. 50% off is a lot because I've said this before and I'll say it again, their lessons on italki are reasonably priced. Not to mention that many teachers actually offer 25% off when you buy five lessons. So in that case, you get 75% off if you use the Black Friday coupon, that is a lot. You can sign up for italki free today using my personalized link that I've included for you in the description box down below, where you'll also be able to find a bit more information about italki. So I have to admit, this discount is too good to miss out on, so I myself am going to be taking lessons in November, and I will report to you how those went in December. Yes, my partner is Dutch, and yes, there are lots of Dutch people around me, but it doesn't help to have additional practice. At least that's what I found. So I would like to practice speaking Dutch a bit more to build up my confidence even more or let's be honest, to build up my confidence, period. It's always difficult when you're speaking a foreign language, am I right? So are we doing this? Are we doing italki together? In case you missed it, I've included my personalized link in the description box down below. Use it to check italki out today. So the first word I wanna to talk to you about today is kapsalon. Now, a couple of years ago, my girlfriend, who is Dutch, was trying to tell me that I should be trying more Dutch foods. And one of the Dutch foods that she mentioned was a kapsalon. And I, of course, at that time, spoke a little bit of Dutch, so I was very confused about the fact that she was telling me that I should try something that was called a hairdressing salon. The word kapsalon is Dutch for hairdressing salon, and I was very confused that there was a dish called that, because the dish didn't sound like it had anything to do with this hairdressing salon. I mean, it's also food and hair. It makes no sense. So needless to say, I was intrigued. Now, for those of you wondering what a kapsalon is, it's actually very intriguing. So I'm going to read out the Wikipedia page on the kapsalon because of course there's a Wikipedia page. So as you can see, a kapsalon is a fast food dish created in 2003 in the Dutch city of Rotterdam, consisting of a layer of French fries placed into a disposable metal takeaway tray topped with doner or gyro meat covered with slices of Gouda cheese. I just said Gouda in English. In Dutch, it would of course be Gouda. And then you melt the cheese, you put the stuff in the oven, so then cheese gets melted, and then you add some dressing on it, some lettuce, and then you put sambal, which is an Indonesian sauce, and voila, the kapsalon. So as you saw with me in the description, this dish was only created in 2003 in Rotterdam. So I'm wondering how such a dish gained popularity in such a short amount of time. I mean, it sounds delicious, and I hope I can find the vegetarian version somewhere because I still haven't tried it. I know, shame on me, I need to do better. But that said, I mean, I was still pretty amused and it wasn't until recently when I was looking up the cup salon because I, I figured there had to be some kind of history behind it. And it turns out that someone who worked at a hairdressing salon went over to this kebab shop and kind of created their own dish. And that's how it was born because this meal came to be known as the dish that the person at the hairdressing salon kept ordering. But if you don't know that, and if you come to the Netherlands or if you hear of this dish, then it is quite surprising that, you know, there's a dish called the hairdressing salon. 
I have to say, I wish I was as creative as the person who came up with this dish because my most outrageous dish was Nutella pasta. It's exactly what it sounds like and no, it was not good. I do not recommend you try this at home. Now the next word on this list is toilet brill of WC brill directly translated to toilet glasses. I don't know. I just don't know. This is one of the things I heard it, like very early on and cause you know, there are toilets everywhere. And my girlfriend would say something about cleaning the WC brill or the toilet brill. And I had learned German before and I also spoke Dutch at the time. So then I kind of put together the fact that brill was glasses and the whole thing just didn't make any sense because now I have this image of a toilet, like a really nerdy toilet in front of me and there's no glass on the toilet. So it's not something that I would have immediately guessed. So initially I would try and directly translate this from English. So instead of saying toilet brill, I didn't know the word. I would say, they say stool. And I think my girlfriend understood me because I remember being distinctly surprised when she said they say brill, or maybe it hadn't clicked initially for me, but then when I thought about it, it was like, this is weird. Again, how are you supposed to learn these words if they don't quite make sense? Because a toilet seat is pretty transparent. I will admit there's some English words that don't make sense. And as I go through this list, some of the English translations or the English variant also doesn't make sense. I will admit, but in this case, I feel like toilet seat, it, it, it's where you sit down on the toilet, but in Dutch, it's a toilet that you put on your face, like a toilet brim. Maybe it's similar to brim, hmm. but then you don't use that word for like the edge around the glass, do you? Well, I don't know. This is an actual question. So what would you call like the edge around a glass? The only other thing I can think about is maybe it doesn't mean brim, but it means rim. Maybe. I don't know. Number three on this list is monster. In English, a monster is a scary creature. This scary creature oftentimes is weird looking, kind of is, is just like everything about the monster is intended to evoke fright within your very soul, if you have a soul. And in Dutch, the word monster could also mean this uh, very scary, intriguing creature, but it also means something very benign and that is sample. So let's say you were taking a bit of groundwater, for instance, with like a machine or something, uh, it would be a sample of the groundwater. And in Dutch, that is a monster von its grondwater. I don't know. Why is it called a monster? I, I have literally no idea. And again, how are you supposed to use these words a without laughing? Cause <laughs> I mean, as much as I appreciate the fact that languages are quirky and of course certain things just are historical accidents, same in English, same in all languages. Every language has this and that's what I love about it. So I'm not saying that, you know, it doesn't make any sense and ha ha ha, like why is Dutch so weird? No, Dutch is wonderful. And I think I'm, I would like to celebrate the quirkiness, but that's it, it makes no sense. And yes, two, how is another, how is a non-native speaker supposed to learn these things? And again, learn them without kind of, you know, laughing really hard because Dutch is so cute but um, a monster is less cute. The next word or words on this list is something that non-native Dutch speakers learn in one of the few first lessons of Dutch. And that is, this is a family term, and that is words like schoonmoeder, schoonvader, schoonzus. And there is a discrepancy, a weird irregularity here. So your schoonfamilie or your schoonvader, schoonmoeder, schoonzus, these are your sister-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law, not in that order. I kind of just said them. So this is your in-laws. And interestingly in the Netherlands, you don't need to be married for people to refer to your partner's family as your in-laws. In English, the law part is very prominent. Now the thing that I find funny is schoon means clean. So, and also please forgive my pronunciation. The sch is Oh my God, so difficult. I'm still not used to it. So I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best. So schoon means clean. And I don't know why your in-laws would be clean. I mean, the law part again in English makes sense, but why, why clean? I have no idea where this could have come from. I mean, sure, my in-laws are clean, but I wouldn't necessarily call them the clean 
mother or the clean father. You know what? It just doesn't make sense. Why am I trying to explain this? Okay. Again, the English version in this case is more transparent and the Dutch one, you kind of just have to learn it and then laugh about it. But the irregularity, one day I get a text from a friend and he said something like, yeah, I'm hanging out with my schwacher. And I looked at it and I looked at my Dutch girlfriend and was like, what in the world does he mean? Like, what the hell is this? I've never heard this word before. And it means brother-in-law. And then I thought back to when, indeed, I had heard this word, but I didn't put it together because I, of course, wanted to say schoon broer, but that may be something you say in Flemish, but in Dutch, you say schwager. I don't know why. It's not in Flemish. Why can't we just say schoon broer? No, no, no. Dutch people wanted to make that more difficult. So if you want to refer to your brother-in-law, you have to say schwager. When you're trying to learn Dutch, this is something that will definitely trip people up. The next one on this list is oh so cute, and that is a paardenbloem. Oh, a paardenbloem is a dandelion. And yes, I said dandelion and thought to myself, I cannot make fun of Dutch for this because dandelion also makes no sense. Dandy, it's spelled differently, but it kind of refers to a man with feminine attributes. I don't like that word. It has some negative connotations to it. And then there's a lion. So it's like a, like a feminine lion. But okay, while the English one is weird, I'm talking about the weird Dutch variant, which directly translates to horse flower. Now, I don't know why it would be called a horse flower. I also don't know why it's called a dandelion, but I can totally imagine like a lion's face with, you know, the lion mane around it, like the flower. But okay, this is my theory and explanation. Of course, that is ad hoc. It's not, maybe it's the reason it's called a dandelion, but I don't know. But in Dutch, I don't see the resemblance of this flower and a horse. That to me is a bit more opaque, but maybe it also refers to the horse's mane. I don't know. Regardless, I just think this one is really cute because dandelions are cute. Horses are wonderful, so a bar de bloom makes sense to me in terms of how I feel about horses and this flower. Language-wise, transparency-wise, it doesn't make sense in either of these languages, so we'll just leave it at that. So we just talked about lions and horses, and now let's talk about apes. And when we talk about apes, I wanna talk about this one symbol that you'll see a lot, and you do see a lot, in email addresses or on your laptop keyboard, just in general, or maybe if you're trying to shorten the word at. So in English, this symbol is called at, but in Dutch, this symbol is called appenstartje, a ape's tail, a monkey's tail. I definitely see the resemblance. It's, it's actually a really great word for it because yes, it looks like the a in at. The word at starts with an a, and yes, this is a funky, symbol like that. And I know it's short for at the rate, I think. No one even remembers what it's short for anymore. So I see where that came from. But in Dutch, it's like they took this and said, no, at is too boring. We're not boring here in the Netherlands. Us Dutch folk, we are creative. We like to invent things. Just look at our Wikipedia page. We've invented a lot of stuff and we are now going to invent a great word for the symbol, appenstartje. I really hope it went down like that because it just looks like a monkey's tail. It does. It's adorable. I'm going to start using that in English. I insist on calling it a monkey's tail. So my email address is DutchAmericanoNL, monkeystail, gmail.com. Sticking to the animal theme, if you are really proud of someone, in Dutch you can say, ik ben trots op je, or I am as proud as a monkey of you. Yeah, you can also say ik ben beter trots op jou. I am as proud as a bear of you. Hmm. In in English, when I think of what kind of animal the word proud refers to or like is attributed to, it's often a lion. So in English, you might say I'm as proud as a lion of you. No, you would never say that. First of all, but I was taught that you could say as proud as a lion or as fast as a cheetah. So the proud was attributed to the lion in English. And here in Dutch, apparently monkeys and bears are proud. But let me know in the comments, if you are Dutch, do you have this attribution between the adjective proud and monkeys or bears? That would be really interesting. We don't in English. So to me, 
This is just out of left field. But okay, seriously, this doesn't just make learning Dutch difficult, it makes speaking English difficult because now I start using these things in English. And no, it's not great. Luckily, I mostly use the Dutch word, but the other day, I kid you not, I was talking to my girlfriend and we were looking at some of our books and I just look at her and I go, we need the vocabulary book. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, the vocabulary book, um, the dictionary. And then I just stood there and was like, this is terrible because in Dutch, a dictionary is a word book. Oh my God, this is such a basic word. I'm so, I was so embarrassed that I did that, but this happens more often than I would like to admit. And the last word on today's list is Klokhuis. Klokhuis is the name of a children's TV show. Nice, right? It also refers to the core of an apple. So when you eat an apple and you're left with that, the core of the apple, that is a clock house. Clock house directly translates to clock house. Nope. Yeah, I don't see the resemblance either. But apparently it's supposed to look like a clock house. Why do I keep saying clock house? Is it actually clock house in English? Well, that's the direct translation anyway. Because a bell tower is a clock tower, I would say, because that's tower. Hmm. But it's basically that part of a church where the time is, right? Like back in the good old days. I still don't see the resemblance. So obviously this is one of those words when you're learning Dutch, you just kind of have to memorize. But these are really salient words. Like I think they're so funny that I tend to remember them because they're hilarious. And the English variants in this case, so I think everything except for dandelion is pretty transparent. So for me, it was really funny because in English, it's just apple core. And in Dutch, it's a clock house. So those are some words I wanted to share with you today that are amusing for us non-native Dutch speaking folks. But are these words amusing to Dutch speakers? If you are a native Dutch speaker and you still find some of these words amusing, as can happen, let me know in the comments. If you think I've left something out, let me know about that too. 